Hey men, thank you for clicking on this video and watching the men's journey video. Um, today I have Chris Jameson with me. Uh, impromptu, by the way. So I, know, I got a text 15 minutes ago that said, Chris, do you have 15 minutes? I said, yes, of course I have 15 minutes. For you, Mike, I have all the minutes in the world. <laughs> That's right. So 15 minutes ago, I just texted him. We're, we're together now to, to, do, this, uh, to do this video. Um, I just wanted you, again, this, the purpose of these emails is to give you a little bit of an insight as a guy about some of the other things going on in the church, about what uh, men of Orchard Hill are involved in, are doing, are standing for, um, the way God is working through us. And one of those ways, of course, uh, is in people's lives and, and the way God is working in our lives on a regular basis. And um, you got to hear from Angelo DiBiase last week, or la my last email. And today I just wanted to talk to Chris Jameson. I think you've told your story once before mm -hmm. at, uh, at our year-end event. And so maybe some of you heard that a couple years ago at the, uh, not the, I want to say the Lego place. It was the... No, it was the Science Center. The Science Center, Carnegie that's Science right. Museum? Yep. So. Yep. That was it. So, you may have heard his story there, but I'm one of the things that I, that we talk about here in men's ministry is that um, we want to encourage men uh, to to walk in the light, okay, to be empowered by the light, mm -hmm. um, and to be that light for the glory of God. As you think about your own life, um, Chris, because you you had a obviously transformative experience here at Orchard Hill. Yeah. How have you seen God's light uh, kind of impact you and and open you up and and bring you home in some ways? Yeah, um, I think the one the noticeable thing, which it kind of sounds very small too, but one of the big things that I noticed in myself and my wife noticed in me as well is that I used to, um, and again this is very small, but I used to swear all the time. It was like my biggest thing. I would curse all the time. I'm case. sorry, but <laughs> and Jansen, I do not. I do not. For some reason, I that? can't see you. Yes, oh, no. I used to do it all the time. And and Jansen would always say, "Chris, why?" Jansen's my wife. Why do you feel the need to like say those words? And it was mainly because that's just I always just I didn't even think about it. It was part of my vocabulary when I came to Christ for some reason, and it wasn't any thought on my part because again, it was such a part of my vocabulary beforehand that I didn't like consciously stop swearing but I did I just found no need to swear and I the words kind of left my vocabulary and my family um, you know my siblings swear and everything and it's not like they're not every other word is a bad word but at the same time it's I'm, I'm around it a lot and I'm still um, I don't know it was one of those weird things that, like I just stopped doing but then for me too it was really important uh, my wife and I came to um, faith and came to church at the very same time and so for us we were just getting ready to um, get engaged and mm -hmm. get married and so f it was a really cool thing to do together as like our mm -hmm. first kind of okay we're two adults now and we're going to step out and do this start this journey on our own especially my wife and I have been together since we were 13 so we were kind of always in my parent like our parents were always a part of you know, in order to go to the movies, our parents had to drive us to the movies. In order to go out to eat somewhere, our parents had to drop us off. So as we got older, we were able to find, especially here coming to church, able to find, this was like our way of saying, okay, we're gonna start our own unit, our own family, and mm -hmm. to be able to do that together and, and kind of grow together has been, I think, one of the most important things for our marriage. It has kind of set the tone for as we prepare to have our first baby in April, it kind of sets the tone for, okay, how are we going to start to have our raise a family and what is that going to look like between the two of us? Yeah. But then also now having a faith and kind of God be a part of that foundation and that discussion conversation or whatever. So, and I failed to mention this at the beginning, but obviously for those of you who don't know, Chris leads worship here. One of our worship leaders just actually came on staff. How long ago? July. July. Okay, so came on staff in July. I was doing stuff before that, like part time. Oh, but you weren't like totally no. just unemployed on the streets or something. Either. No, yeah, I was. I was <laughs> totally unemployed on the streets. <laughs> no, I was a. Uh, well, you know this. I was a musician, uh, singer, songwriter, and I still am. But I was doing that full time. Um, but for me, talking about like wanting to be in the light and um, having that mindset, I found myself, and I would go to 
Jansen a lot and say like, I feel like I'm just pushing my own image. I'm trying mm -hmm. to like sell, and that's essentially what you are when you're a musician, you're a brand. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I felt like I was selling, for lack of better words, myself, and didn't always, it just started not to mm -hmm. feel right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I wanted to start to try to get involved and use the gift that I was given in a way to point people towards that light, point people towards, um, you know, the true meaning of what I think we're all on this earth to do, which is to glorify God and to point others in his direction. So, yeah, that is, I have to say like this, you're one of the coolest stories I've gotten to be a part of before. Um, seeing someone who, um, I, Mike I, was part of the first life group that Jansen and I were in. He led the first <laughs> life right. group and he married that's right. us. <laughs> that's, that is true. I had that privilege, which yeah. was incredible. Um, but uh, but you were clearly talented, very talented, gifted by God, okay? And God used him in some incredible ways. Um, but then he used you, he took you from like the voice where you <clears throat> where you competed and, you, and then after that you were trying to make your career go. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting to see how since then as you've lent your gift to God to be used, how he's used it. Can you speak at all to the difference between those two those two experiences for you and how your gift has been utilized. Yeah, I think I've always been like a very family oriented person. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest thing about coming off of the voice and entering this like music career thing was um, that lifestyle is just very up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly on the road and traveling and cause it, cause you have to push. It's, it's like your, like your own, your, your own brand. So you have to push that and you have to go out and you have to promote it and no one's going to promote you better than you. So there's all these different expectations that you have and that others have of you when you're in that field. And I knew that that wasn't the lifestyle that I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. Just even take, I'm, I mean, thankfully kind of God intervened in my life at a very important time. But even before that, I knew that this wasn't that wasn't the lifestyle I wanted to have. I just didn't have the courage to like go and do something else or to get out of that lifestyle. Because for me, my life was planned out from the day I graduated college. My, I'm sorry, I graduated high school. I had a plan for what I was doing. When I went on The Voice, that was not part of the plan. And so from that point on, I was in this kind of weird world of trying to figure out, okay, well, my plan didn't work. So now what's my plan and how do I adapt to that? Um, and I wasn't really super comfortable not knowing the plan. Um, but yeah. for me now being able to, I don't know what I'm saying. Where were we? Where no, were we that's talking? great. Cause here, here's okay. Here's my I question. Like I'm rambling. Maybe a little bit, but that's okay. You're, okay. you're, you're going somewhere. I think, I think, and I think you guys can feel it with me. So <clears throat> you, you had your plan. Okay. Yeah. And this is where I think it connects with, with men too, in general. Yeah. It, it's interesting because you had your plan and and God, once you entrusted your whole self, including yeah. your plan to God, He ended up taking it in, in in a direction maybe you weren't expecting. Yeah, would that be would that be correct? Yeah, and I think it was a very like slow and gradual mm -hmm. thing, because I've I haven't been at the church a long time, but I've been around the church. I mean, this is the only church I've ever gone to, so I've been here since uh, what was I think two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm sorry, sixteen. Well, fifteen and sixteen. And I haven't in that time. It's take I don't know what that what's that three years, yeah, three years, three or four years. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like the past three or four years have been this gradual process of me just becoming comfortable mm -hmm. with because um, it took me a while to to want to come on staff full time because I felt like oh if you come on staff full time then people are gonna see that and just think oh he failed at the music thing so now he has to go and get a job at a church to pay the bills. Um, and hmm. part of it was, I just think, number one, yeah, I think it was just a, like a lifestyle thing. And for me, understanding that if I didn't feel comfortable pursuing the music career thing and pushing myself as the brand and trying to promote myself, then what would I feel comfortable doing using the gift I've been given? Because I, I also knew that I wasn't, I, I needed to, mm -hmm. I had the gift for a reason and I wanted to use it. And I uh, felt that if I didn't, that that would be... Um, 
I don't know, just wrong for me to not use it. So I figured this will be a good spot for me. Plus, I love, um, this is why I wanted the job here. I'm a very type A personality. Okay. And Driven. Being a being a creative is like usually the opposite of being the type A like spreadsheet That's true. guy. And yeah, when musician, I, musicians have have a reputation. <laughs> aren't notoriously people that are very organized and on time. Yeah. Um, I'm not always on time, but I am very organized. Um, <laughs> But this this is this job has been the perfect combination of like my my type A and my type B, and it, and I come home and I tell Jason all the time I'm like, I love my job, I love what I do, and I, and I kick myself so because cool. it took me, like a year and a half, two years to like actually get yeah. comfortable with that, but now I couldn't imagine not doing it. So, I, okay, so here's what I love about this because right now I mean you go on LinkedIn or uh, it just in in general in the professional world mm -hmm. it's all about self promotion. Yeah. It's all about branding yourself um, yeah. and putting it out there, making yourself look a certain way to attract business or, or to help your business or whatever. Um, and it's interesting how we as guys, we will want to run ahead and do those things and get the success, get the adoration, the notice, yeah. all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's interesting, you, you kind of have to sacrifice all that for the moment yeah. It, when when we, to allow God's light in yeah. to really reveal your heart and show you uh, who you are and who you are in Christ and who He is because when you're when you live in the light when you step into the light suddenly you're revealed but also God's revealed but often when you do that though it takes you into unexpected territory that can be yeah. where really you can be used for w in ways you never expected and. Yeah. And for purposes so much grander and more than even you had originally thought. And I think you have to be a you have to not be concerned or overly concerned with what others think of you and the decisions you make. And I, I, I feel like a lot of times I wasn't making my own decisions. It was me worrying about what other people would think and allowing that to kind of make the decision or make the the path that I take. Um, kind of what I thought was the only path. But in reality, it's like, no, you, God's in control. I, so, so I wrote this song called Movie, and essentially what it was, it was all about like me simply being a character inside of this movie, which is this entire world that God created. And God, for each of us, he's created each of us, and so each of us is a character in that movie. And we are not the director of the movie. We're simply being... We're simply vessels, mm -hmm. um, and our goal should be to allow God to use us in whatever way He deems necessary. And if we spend so much time trying to concoct our own plans and trying to do all these things and plan all these things and have this life prepared before us, we're essentially saying, no, you can't be the director, God, of my movie. I need to be the director of my movie. And none of what I directed, none of what I put together and planned out I'm currently living none of it because it's com my life is complete. Had you said to, to, to me five years ago that I would be working full time at Orchard Hill Church, I would have laughed in your face and I would have said that's absolutely not even that's not going to happen ever. But now it's like, and, and until I was able to let go of what other people thought or what other people would think of my decisions and just say, no, what's good for me? What's good for my family? Where do I think God wants me to be? And it wasn't like I heard a voice that said, Chris, go. But I feel like it was a bunch of little steps that allowed me to finally. So I don't think, too, that these aren't things that, like, big decisions and big things I don't think are supposed to happen overnight. I think as long as you're open to them happening, it can be a gradual sort of thing, which is what, in my case, that's what it was. That's amazing. Thank you, Chris, for sharing I know, with I us. feel like none of that made sense, though. It made a total sense. Are you kidding me? Okay. It's amazing. I'm going to so, watch this back and not be satisfied with my responses. <laughs> right, because he's a perfectionist. He's an A-type a -type driven. Type so a. if you see Chris in the lobby uh, over the next couple weekends, make sure you encourage him because I think, I think you said some amazing Yeah, but don't just encourage me because he told you to encourage me. If you really think this was <laughs> awful, then don't encourage me. And just tell me, Chris, you need to work on your speaking engagements. Anyway, all right. So, guys, hopefully this, maybe this conversation even, just gives you perspective in your own experience because we all find ourselves in different places in our careers, especially as men, where we, man, so much of our identity is wrapped up in that. And it can be scary to step into the light and bring even our work, what we do for a living, into the light with us. 
uh, expose it to God's uh, truth, his plan, and allow him to take over um, our lives, every, every aspect of it. Um, but uh, it can be scary, but it can be a really good thing too, because God uh, may do some things you never expected in some amazing ways. So uh, just a couple reminders for men's ministry coming up here in January, uh, January 23rd. I'm looking at my calendar. Yes, uh, Thursday, January 23rd is our Beast Feast. It's already, we got some amazing meat coming. <laughs> Actually, we've got some some bear uh, that's going to uh -huh. be coming. We do. Bear? This is stuff from Alaska. Did someone capture the bear and kill the bear? Somebody and... caught the bear in Alaska. We have little samples of maybe bear and halibut and I've caribou. It's, it. it's going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible. So uh, if, if you want to meet some other guys from Orchard Hill, um, hang out, get to know some guys, please join us that evening. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. <clears throat> the discipleship training course uh, webinar that I'm doing online, there's still time to register for that if you'd like to and to apply, fill out the application. Um, would love for you to do that. Build into some other guys at Orchard Hill who might be going through some of the same stuff that Chris just described that he has been going through um, or went through before is he's trying to figure out how to put um, his life in context of God and his narrative and his plan. Um, there are a ton of guys here at Orchard Hill that could really use being mentored and discipled. All right, guys, so until next time, we will see you around church. See you on the journey.